Anger, he smiles, towering in shiny metallic purple armor. Green jealousy waits behind him. Her fiery green gown stares at the grassy ground. What up guys, Alex here, GuitarForge.com So today we're going to take a look at part one of uh, Bold is Love by Jimi Hendrix This is just the first part of the lesson, the entire lesson is going to be available at GuitarForge.com for purchase The link is going to be in the description box down below It's uh, a note for note transcription, the full transcription of the song which has two verses, two choruses and two solos and also there is an additional second guitar on the chorus so all of that is going to be transcribed in the full lesson with tabs and um, a backing track and all that good stuff um, in this lesson we're going to take a look at the first verse and also I'm going to um, explain to you how to approach, how Jimmy approached uh, this type of songs in his playing and just uh, going to show you some of the things that you can apply in your own playing when you're playing this style of music, this kind of music. Um, also, if you haven't had a chance to check out the course that I have, a big course on Jimi Hendrix's style of playing, which is called Get Experienced in two parts. Check it out. It's a, a great course, in my opinion. goes into a lot of details on Jimmy's style of playing. I'm going to leave the links also in the description box down below. Also, if you would like to check out the sort of cover playthrough, which is going to be also included in the full lesson, uh, but um, the sort of cover playthrough is also going to be available on my other channel, uh, which uh, I will also link um, in the description box down below. So if you're interested, check that out as well. Uh, the tuning for this lesson is going to be half step down on all the strings and um, for the sound I was using again the VST plugin guitar rig I'm going to show you the picture of the preset in just a moment and while you are checking it out I'm going to play you my low E string so you can tune up and play along with this lesson So let's go for the close-up and start the lesson. Alright, so before we start breaking down the song note by note, uh, I want to go over some of the more basic things. And we're going to start off with uh, the chord progression for the verse that Jimmy played. So we have um, two chords played per bar. So in other words, we have a chord uh, being played for two beats. And the first part of the verse starts off with the uh, chord A played right here, then we go to E, then we go to the next bar, we have F sharp minor, and then we have D, third bar we have A again, going to E, again F sharp minor, then we have D, uh, but then we go into C sharp major, so these two chords D to C sharp major are played for one beat each. So the C sharp um, major is sort of like a passing chord here. Then we have the second sort of the second part of the verse which uh, starts with the D. Again we play each of the chords for two beats so we have two chords per bar. So we have D, A, all of these major. Then we go to B minor then we have G, so each of these we play for two beats. Then again we have D, A, again B minor, and then we have G and G sharp. Again, again the G sharp is like a passing chord, so we play the G for one beat and the G sharp for one beat. Okay, so that's the structure of the first verse. Now, to get used to to the chord progression and also um, to be able to understand what Jimmy is playing uh, rather than just some licks, I would suggest first of all you just play through that without adding any licks or anything like that just to get the feel of the song, how it goes and how the chords are changing because when you start playing different licks you have to be aware of the uh, where you are at, the, at that certain time, what chord is being played and stuff like that. So once you get that um, going on, then it's easier to, to uh, apply the licks 
played uh, during the song. So for the beginning or for the first time, I would suggest you just play through the chord progression, just playing the chords. So it would be, it would be something like this. So just playing the chord progression in that kind of style where you can sort of um, play first the bass notes, the lower strings, and then um, add the higher register or higher strings to the chord, you know, kind of breaking it up, you already can get into that sort of um, uh, flow of the song, um, you know, and it starts sounding a little bit more interesting rather than just playing. <laughs> You know, just straight chords like that. So, play around with different rhythms and also um, with different um, approaches. Like I said, you know, playing the lower strings first and then higher uh, strings and stuff like that. Kind of breaking up the rhythm. You're gonna sound a lot better um, even if you don't play the licks. All right. So in this next part, I would like to explain to you how Jimmy approached these type of songs. That he did like Access Bolt is Love, Little Wing, uh, Castles Made of Sand, even Hey Joe and Wind Cries Mary and songs like that which are kind of ballad, uh, ballad type of songs. So what he did is he wasn't just playing the chords but he um, would oftentimes would kind of break up the chord into lower strings, higher strings but also he would play uh, little licks here in, and there in between sort of the chords. So the way he did it is basically um, when you analyze the licks that he did. So for example, when he played the chord progression in this way. So I'm going to stop right here. You can see that um, it has some chords, but it also has some licks uh, in between them. So what he did, the way he approached it, he embellished the chords. In other words, when we have just the, the straight chord, he would uh, a lot of times would uh, embellish it by using the, you know, things like that. So here, just adding the suspended, what is called the suspended fourth. He still holds the chord. But he adds little things like that, which is in this case, for example, um, a suspended fourth, just playing by, you know, hammer on here and pull off. Uh, sometimes he would play a lick like. So this part is basically just based on the major pentatonic scale. So here we have the chord, and he's using the part of the. A major pentatonic scale to create a lick. Then when he goes for example for the F sharp minor, so this part F sharp minor is based on the F sharp minor pentatonic scale right here. So he just hammers on, you know, does a, a lick like that. When he goes to D, so this lick, for example, is based again on the appropriate pentatonic. So here we have the D chord in this shape and here we have the appropriate pentatonic. So he takes a little bit, uh, a few notes of that pentatonic and he creates a lick playing, uh, playing it. So it's all over the place like that. When he goes to B, B minor, so here he just does um, a little hammer on pull off.
but it's also based on on the minor pentatonic. So my point is, he knew the shapes of the chords, but he also knew the pentatonics, the appropriate patterns for the pentatonics. So when you have the A major in this shape, you have this. When you have D major, you have... Right? So you have two positions here of the, uh, the major pentatonic. When you go to the minor, you have this pentatonic here. B, the same thing. So, you know, he did a lot of that stuff. So he would play the chord or kind of break it up and then play a little lick um, based on the, the appropriate pentatonic scale. So if you're interested in learning how to do that, I suggest you check out my uh, Cage System course, which is called the Fretboard Frenzy um, Part Basic, which explains all of that stuff. So in that you will learn uh, the five different shapes of the chord, how to play them in different positions, but also the appropriate pentatonic scale to play over that chord. So there are three families, the minor, major and dominant seven chords, and the appropriate pentatonics of all of the five shapes, which are associated with a certain chord shape. And uh, that's um, that kind of approach uh, Jimmy used in a lot of his playing. So if you're interested, check that out. Uh, the, link, the link is going to be also in, this, in the description box down below. So that system, after you've learned it obviously, allows you to play in the same style as Jimmy did with the same approach, but you can actually start creating your own licks in the same style as Jimmy or, you know, totally different licks uh, that you come up with. And uh, you can uh, play that kind of style in, a different, um, in different music, different songs as well. All right, so in the next part, we're gonna break down the first verse. Uh, note for note, just like Jimmy played it on the on the recording. So the first verse starts off like this. Okay, so here we hit the A major chord. Then we have a little pause. Then we have. So here we're playing dead strings, muted strings. So you hit it once with the down pick motion, and then. Uh, with an upstroke, you play again the dead strings, but the last note is going to be around 14th fret or something like that, a slide out. So we have like that. So all together. And now we go into uh, the chords. So here we have the E major chord starting off. Uh, Jimmy's using this kind of approach where he breaks the chords up into kind of bass notes and then an upper register of the chord or playing some sort of flick. So here he plays the low E string open, let, lets it ring out. And uh, while fretting the chord like that, he plays a little uh, trick, which is... So here I'm fretting the chord like that. And a lot of times Jimmy would um, omit the fifth of the chord, in this case it's uh, the, the A string, so a lot of times he would not use the full chord like that, but just uh, you know playing the low E and then uh, skipping the A string, muting it and then playing the rest of the chord. And the same applies when he plays uh, the chords like that so with uh, sort of like a bar chord, but instead of playing it like that he would play it with a thumb over the low E string, he would skip the A string and would play uh, the strings, uh, the other part of the chord as it is. So here we play the low E open, then we add this little lick, which is a hammer on pull off from the uh, first fret to the second, and then back again to the first on the G string, and let it ring out. Then we go into the F sharp minor. So here, using the thumb, going to the 2nd fret on the low E, 
Then we have... So here uh, we have uh, another grace note hammer on pull off. Uh, fretting the B string and the G on the second fret, like the part of the F sharp minor. Uh, grace note meaning quick hammer on onto the fourth fret on the G string, while at the same time again uh, fretting the second fret of the second string of the B string. So you play that lick, then we go to the fourth fret on the uh, D string and then you can have a sort of as a passing note the open A then we go to the D chord so that's the next part going to the D chord kind of kind of playing the um, just a power chord and arpeggiating it so that means playing the first the bass note on the fifth fret of the D, of the A string, then picking that uh, A note on the seventh fret of the of the D. Then we have little lick here, sliding into the seventh fret. I'm sorry, ninth fret from the seven on uh, the D string. So you slide into it, pick it again, and then hammer on on the A string from seven to nine. And then picking it one, once again, like that. Then we go to the A chord. So here, again, breaking up the chord into lower strings and uh, high register. So we have uh, uh, the low E on the fifth fret. Let it ring out. Then we have this lick, which is. Again, it's a grace note, so fretting the first and second string on the fifth fret and hammering on uh, onto the seventh fret, but uh, playing it quickly like that, and you let ring out the first string as well, and then quickly going to this double stop, fourth fret on G, fifth fret on B, and again playing grace note, so hammering on onto the sixth fret of the G string. So that's what you're going. That's what you want to get. Sliding out, then we go to the E again. Here, again playing low E string, open. Again the E chord. Uh, again we have uh, the uh, grace note from first uh, fret to the second and then pulling off. But before that you can hear there's a... He picks that uh, G string on the first fret. Like that. And then picking the rest of the chord, the other strings as well. Again, going to F sharp minor, doing exactly the same thing. Then we go to the D chord again. Again, playing kind of power chord, arpeggiating. D, then we go to the C sharp major. different um, rhythmical figures here. So let me play through uh, the the part that the parts that we got so far. So it goes like this slowly. Okay, so after this part, we go into sort of sec second part of the um, of the verse, and now we go into the D chord. But instead of playing the D chord, he plays a lick which goes like this. So here I'm fretting the G and the D strings on the seventh fret, and I'm hammering on onto the ninth frets on the D string, and then playing the seventh fret of the D again while the G string is uh, fretted, fretted with, uh, with the D string. So we have like that. And then we play grace note uh, from 7 to 9 on the A string. Like that. 
and we'll play it two times. Then we'll go to the A chord. Here, uh, after we play the bass notes on the fifth fret of the low E string, he plays a quick uh, grace note here on the double stop, fourth fret on the G fifth on the B string. And then there is a little pause, rest, and then he plays two, two more times, like that. Then we go to the B. So here, fretting the B chord like that, again breaking up, playing the bass note on the low E7 fret, and then he plays, so it's a quick, um, it's a quick hammer-on pull-off from 7 to 10 on the B string based on that uh, position here of the minor pentatonic. So hammering on pulling off, uh, 7, 10, 7, and then we pick the other notes uh, of the chord, like that. Then we go to the G. So to the G, playing again with the thumb, low E string third fret. So here he does this little trick again, uh, hammer on pull off, uh, second fret to the fourth to the second uh, on the G string. Then going to after the quick hammer on pull off. We play fifth frets of the uh, D string. You can pick it twice. Sorry, like that. So playing it two times. Then we go to the D chord. So here, picking the uh, D notes on the fifth frets of the A string two times. Then quickly going to the uh, this lick again. So it's a grace note from seven to nine on the D string. But before that, it could be unintentional, but uh, it could be on purpose uh, that Jimmy picked the uh, seven frets on the G string. So like that. So before hammering on 797 on a D, we have 7th fret on the G string, back to 7 here, and then 7 to 9 on the A string. Going again to the A chord here, playing the bass note. Then again we have two quick uh, grace notes here on this double stop, so it's exactly the same. Going to the B minor, again sort of the same lick that we did previously. Hammering on to the 10th fret, like that, on the B, and then we have... So, after that, we have that sort of build up to the chorus where we play the G chord now, and it's played in triplets. So it's a one, two, three, and then we move to the G sharp chord major again in triplets. So we have. Okay. Uh, passing chord, the G sharp going to the A for the next section. All right, so that was um, the first verse of the Access Bold is Love. Now I'm gonna play all of it. Uh, I'll try to play it a little bit slower. All of the parts together so you can see what's going on and hear how it goes, just the guitar. So it goes like this.
guys, so that brings us to the end of this lesson. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you would like to continue learning the whole song, check out the link in the description box down below. Thank you very much for checking out this video. Like, comment, share, subscribe if you're new to my channel. Don't forget to visit guitarforest.com for more guitar related stuff. In the meantime, I'll see you again. I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy and as always, let the force be with you.